for National Crime Victims Week. We collectively acknowledge the pain, the resilience, and the courage of all those who've been victims of crime, particularly those who've been victims of crime in Shelby County in the last year. And I want to also acknowledge some people that have a real big effort a role in helping those victims of crime. So I'm going to start off first by acknowledging Amy McCullough, who is the head of our Victim Witness Coordinator Unit, um, and also Teresa Jones of the Crime Victims and Rape Crisis Center, who is here with us tonight. Thank you very much for coming. At the heart of our efforts here at the DA's office is a dedicated group of 20 Victim Witness Coordinators, some of whom are behind me, and their job every day is to work with victims and witnesses to provide them the guidance and the connections to services and the resources they need and also to help them navigate the complexities of our criminal justice system with compassion and sensitivity, which they do on a regular basis. The worst part of my job, which is also the most inspiring part of my job, is to meet with the families of those who have lost loved ones to violence, something that unfortunately circumstances call upon me to do with some regularity. And unfortunately, they don't want for company. Every year in the United States, over 20 million people are the victims of some kind of crime. Over 6 million of those are violent crime. And of course, we have company here in Shelby County. Here in Shelby County, every year, our victim witness coordinators help over 14,000 new, unique individuals who are victims of crime. Since I've taken office, I've been serious about our commitment to helping these victims. Now, that doesn't just mean throwing the book at each and every defendant. We couldn't do that if we wanted to, and it wouldn't always be appropriate. But what it does mean is listening carefully to every victim, to making sure that they understand and appreciate fully every aspect of our criminal justice system in advance, to hear, to give voice to their concerns, to the court, to listen carefully about what they want from the criminal justice system, what they think is justice, what they want to happen in their case, and to give that real weight. Because we can never forget that it's the victims that are reason why we're here. That's why we do what we do. And they need to know, and the public needs to know, that we take every crime seriously. And that every defendant that commits a crime must and will be held accountable. And for those defendants who commit violent crime, those who would commit violence, they must pay the price. They must have serious consequences. Aside from that, we can show our commitment to victims in other ways as well, with compassion. Um, just among other things, we can try to make sure that they get the restitution they need, the compensation that they need. Um, and we owe it to them to do what we can to make their journey through the criminal justice system just a little more bearable. So in the past year, I'm proud to say that we've done a number of different things in that general neighborhood. So for example, we provided now free parking to all victims and witnesses who have to come to court. We hired a new victim witness coordinator to deal with the new bail system to help them with that part of the process and the new bail hearing room. We partnered with the Crime Victims and Rape Crisis Center to house a victim advocate in the courthouse, right there on the spot, connecting victims who appear in court to the services that they need. We've even provided snacks and water and free lunch when they have to hang around 201 Poplar all day waiting for their turn in court. And we hosted this last December the 13th annual season of Remembrance Memorial Service for the families of those who lost their loved ones to homicide. In the coming year, we will do all of that and we will do more. I am pleased to announce tonight that we recently received a federal grant of hundreds of thousands of dollars and we will be able to use hundreds of thousands of dollars to provide public safety related compensation to victims where they didn't have it before. This will be able to supplement the state victim compensation fund, which unfortunately is limited only to direct medical expenses and funeral expenses. Together, we can create a community where every voice is heard, 
As we stand here today, let's reaffirm our pledge to stand by those who've been victimized by crime. Let's try to be beacons of hope in their darkness and champions of justice in their fight for closure. We need to create a community where every voice is heard, every story is valued, and every victim is empowered to reclaim their sense of security and dignity. So when we see those bridge lights light up, have they lit up already? They have? All right. It'll look better when it's darker, right? In a few minutes when it's darker and it looks even better as we gaze upon these lights, let's not just think of them as a pretty photo op. Let's let them inspire us to be a light for justice, to illuminate a path forward so that we can have healing and safety for all. Thank you very much.